Oh, it's very blue. So very blue. Voodoo blue is what they call it for you. You join me inside the 2021 BMW M5 competition. And if you were to visualize a sports sedan, you'd probably be looking at the BMW 5 Series. And if you go a step further to think about a super sedan, you might be looking at the BMW M5. And that's because the M5 has effectively owned this segment since it was introduced in the 80s. That doesn't just mean though that BMW and its M division can sit back on their legacy because the M5 has a ton of stiff competition from cars like the Audi RS7, the Porsche Panamera Turbo S, and the Mercedes AMG E63 S. To stay on the ball, BMW has given the 2021 model year M5 and M5 competition tweaks to the exterior design, interior technology, and comfort, and driving dynamics. We're gonna dive into those today to see if this new M5 competition is still the cream of the crop. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is, the 2021 BMW M5 competition. And boy, is it blue, right? BMW calls this color voodoo blue and they want an extra $5,000 for it. And I gotta say, I like the color, but I don't like it on this car. I see this color more on like a hot hatchback. I'm thinking like the Ford Focus RS from a few years ago, that and this color, just fine. Here on an executive sports sedan, I don't know how I feel about it, but I wanna know from you, what do you think? In the comments below, let me know, do you like the color? Do you like it on this car? Is it worth the extra 5K? And now before I get too deep into this review, let's talk channel real quick. Have you subscribed yet? And if not, I really think you should because you will get access to daily POV day drives, POV night drives, live Q and A's, and reviews like this one. You don't wanna miss out on any of that. So hit subscribe and tap the bell to get notified. And then just, you know, enjoy, enjoy yourself. And if you like what we're doing, you wanna support the channel, you do so simply by liking, commenting, and sharing this video. You of course can do more, get yourself a miles per hour t-shirt or join us on Patreon get some nice perks for you. But whatever you do, we appreciate the support in all forms, keeping that car content flowing. So back to the M5 competition. For 2021, there are subtle updates going on to this exterior. I will point them out now. Starting at the front, we've got a larger grill, but importantly, it's still the kidney grill. The design has expanded it has grown over the years, and this grill is now just slightly larger than 2020, but it's not the buck tooth front end that they're applying to the 4 Series, thankfully. Maybe that's coming, I hope not, because this looks much, much better, especially with the competition packages, shadow line trim, aka the black gloss trim that we're seeing on the grill and on the trim pieces for the front air intakes and the mirror housings and window trim, and I'll get into all that later, but, the grill is more subdued with the black gloss trim. The headlights are updated for 21. So we've got new designs here. I love the chunkiness of these light blades and the laser etchings there look really good. And again, the shadow line backing for the housings just help the lights pop. You'll see that in the taillights as well. It's a good design theme. And then here, the front air intakes are slightly tweaked, the design this lower bumper piece is mostly the same for 2020. Still got that honeycombing for the front air dam. Another look at this paint color in the sun. Doesn't have any metallic flake to it or anything. It's more of a milky finish. Does hide dirt very, very well. One thing in its favor. Moving to the side now, we'll see a set of standard 20 inch light alloy wheels on the competition. Really cool design. You get a brushed metal exterior for the spokes and then a gloss black interior, gloss black center cap and an M insignia right there. And when you see the gold brake calipers, you know one thing, this person sprung for the carbon ceramic brakes. For an extra $8,500, 
you'll get more resistance to fade for high performance driving. But man, $8,500 ain't cheap. You have to really be dedicating yourself to track driving or consistent canyon driving where it's really gonna matter because otherwise the standard steel brakes are great. No matter how you slice it, six piston front, single piston floating rear for the brakes. And these wheels are wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires, 275 section front, 285 section rear. So not a completely square stance. And I'll be honest, I prefer Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires to P0s because even though P0s are great in the beginning, the moment they get to a certain threshold, there's a steep drop off in performance, whereas 4S tires from Michelin kind of hold up through most of the life of the tire. But I think they're pretty much interchangeable on BMW M vehicles. Some they ship with Michelin, some are with Pirellis. At the side, we've got this little garnish with M competition badging, again in gloss black. Mirror housings, also in gloss black. You've got the aero design to let air pass through there. Black shadow line trim around the windows and on the frames. Ooh, and then up here, carbon fiber roof. That is standard on the competition cars, saves a bit of weight and importantly lowers the center of gravity. Just very cool, very, very cool. And the profile, superb. They have not changed this for 21. I really like the profile of this car. I like that it's a sedan. It's not one of these coupe design four doors that they're just shoving down our faces. It's a classic sedan and it looks really good. Still have the Hoffmeister kink, I believe it's called, right there, the C pillar. And now we can really see those LED tail lights popping from within those black light housings. Looking good. Those tail light designs are tweaked for 21. Also tweaked is the lower bumper. So in gloss black here, integrates nicely with the diffuser and then genuine quad exhaust ports. Not just finishers on like two tailpipes. These are genuine exhaust ports. BMW does that well. Up here, M5 competition badging, and then a subtle, I like that word, subtle, trunk mounted spoiler. And that is pretty much the exterior of the 21 M5 competition. Big thumbs up from me. The changes were not overdone. It was a good looking sedan before, it's a good looking sedan now, with some slight enhancements. And now, Let's go check out that interior. And on our way in, we can note we've got smart key access. So you leave the key in your pocket, just pull on the door handle to unlock it. To lock it, you put your finger on these three tabs right there. We've got that for the front and rear doors to maximize convenience. Open on up. Welcome, welcome. This one has the black leather option. And not just that, it has the executive package. So you get full merino leather, higher quality leather in more places in this cabin. In addition to heated and ventilated front seats with that exec pack, heated rear seats, rear sunshades, manually controlled, and a power rear sunshade for that back glass, along with massaging for the front seats and a 3D surround view camera and parking assistance. That's all part of the executive package. Well worth the, what, $3,400 it is? Well worth it. This one also has the Bowers and Wilkins sound system for another $3,400. That one, not as worth it to me. The sound system is good. I'm not an audiophile, so I can't really go in depth on that. It's good, but it's not, doesn't blow me away. And for $3,400, I think it should blow you away. That's what I think. Looking at the door panels, we've got this 3D carbon trim, they call it, and honestly, doesn't do it for me. No texture, it just looks like ho-hum. Might as well just be a blank piece of aluminum. Leather all up on the door panels with that gray contrast stitch. Leather all up in here, more contrast stitching. Very nice, high quality feel. Even this piece of plastic in here is a softer piece, higher quality materials. 
that rear sunshade is operated by this button right here. Press it and it'll open up. Let's see? There we go. Press it again. See you later. Power folding door mirrors. Press that button. Hello. Goodbye. And then down here we have a power trunk. That is standard on the M5. Press that button. There we go. And then hold it to pull it back on in. It'll beep at you. That's that. Getting down here, this transitions from leather to injection molding. It is high quality injection molding, but you will note it is not leather. More Bowers and Wilkins speaker covers. It is a nice metal cover to that. Down here, we've got metal trim, uh, throttle and brake pedal, and then dead pedal. M5 competition sill here, and this does illuminate at night. Pretty neat. This is plastic down here. M5 branded floor mats. And then we can see in here that gray contrast stitch and leather comes all on this lower portion down here. Little cubby, stash something. More of that trim in here. You can see some of the ambient lighting. Great contrast stitch, great contrast stitch. Just feels very well put together, for sure. Aluminum door handle, nice action there. Aluminum trim piece in there. And let's hop on in. Soft closed doors, do, soft closed doors, soft closed doors are part of the executive package as well. So you get it close and it will do the rest for you. Okay, let's fire it on up. Start stop button right there. It's gonna ding at me because my seatbelt's not on, but it's a nice ding, it's a friendly ding. Do a quick pan of the cabin. See, because it's not a coupe or anything like that, visibility is superb back there. Very easy to see out of. It's a, that's a narrowish C pillar. No problems in terms of rear, rear visibility. Looking at the steering wheel here, we've got a leather piece over the airbag cover. Love that. With the stitching around the border, the MW crest right in the center, aluminum trim pieces for the steering wheel controls around them rather, and then a soft, piece of plastic for each of the buttons. This one controls the head-up display, so you can change up the info on that. Radio information. And then when you change up the M mode, you'll see that that goes from having just your speed and the posted speed limit to having a full tachometer. It's pretty big when you change that over, I'll show you. Volume controls here, this is nice, I like this is textured for the volume up down or for uh, your controls. This this is the volume here, sorry. These are your controls left and right. M2 button there, bright red. M1 button off to the left. The paddles are a little underwhelming, to be honest. They're not huge. Let's see it, yeah. Not huge, not a ton of action. The back is plastic. The front feels pretty cheap, even if it is aluminum plated front not impressive in terms of the paddles. Love the M tricolor stitched into the center of the steering wheel and the thickness of the wheel is just right. It's yeah, it's just there. If you've got a smaller hand, it's gonna feel too thick for you. But if you have a large size hand, it's gonna feel great. On the left-hand side, here are all your active safety controls. This vehicle does come with the Driving Assistance Plus package, which adds traffic jam assist, lane change assist, and something else help me out steering wheel heating is standard on this car again this this may be plastic but this is a soft piece of plastic in here and then oh you know what i might be wrong that actually is leather wow look at that that is thinly coated in leather down there at the m crest there insignia then over here your turn signals and you press bc to change up the info on the right side of the display Definitely not as reconfigurable, customizable 
as the MBUX system for this digital gauge cluster, but you can change up some information. Everything you really need to see, you can change up. And then when you change the M mode, it will change this display in addition to the head-up display. Oh, and that red light right there, infrared sensor gauging your attention, it's used with the active safety systems. If you're looking away for too long, it'll disengage like traffic jam assist. So you have to be paying attention and you can't see the red light with the naked eye. It's only showing up on the camera. So that is the steering wheel setup. Really good size wheel, good feeling wheel. Feels right in the hands, nice thickness there. Um, if you've got a large size hand, it's gonna feel right. If you've got a smaller hand, it might feel just a little over thick but good wheel, good wheel for sure. And now looking at one of the big updates for 2021, we moved from a 10.25 inch display to a 12.3 inch display, now matching the same size as this gauge cluster here and matching, not by coincidence, I'm sure, the same display size as MBUX. And that is really, that's my benchmark right now. MBUX system is such a good system. The visuals are clear and crisp and inviting. And iDrive, I think, is a very close second. This is a super system, very easy to use. We've got wireless Apple CarPlay in Android Auto. That's something MBUX doesn't have on all of their vehicles, all the Mercedes-Benz vehicles. So that's a really nice feature to have. I can show you Apple CarPlay here. Just hit that button. Takes over the whole display, not part of the display. Little known fact, BMW had a partnership with Apple. So as they were rolling out Apple CarPlay, BMW got some of the first features and that included the full width to their display. So it looks very native on their systems and that's why it's so good. So that's Apple CarPlay. Get back out of it by going to menu or by going to the BMW app on your list of apps there in Apple CarPlay. So the way you can control this system, pinch and zoom, just like a smartphone here, super responsive, nice to use. These tiles you can reconfigure just by going here. You can drag in which information you want. So if I want music as that center, move it there, switch navigation. I'm still dragging it, I don't know why. And then you can um, set up an extra page if you want to, or reconfigure these home pages. This is your setup screen. I'll show you that in a second. Drag this down for some other adjustments, hotkeys, if you will. And then on the left-hand side, we've got media. Sirius XM radio is gonna be standard in this car and some other apps. Oh, okay, got a text. Yep, go back out. I really need to just turn that off. Okay, so you got some other apps in here and that's how you get to Apple CarPlay. If you don't, just press that button up there in the left-hand corner. Communication, navigation, car. So here's where you get to your driving information. If you wanna show trip data or sport displays, this one's fun if you're driving somewhat aggressively. See the G and all the power delivery. Engine flow, how's the engine power flowing to your wheels? And then your M menu, here's where you can reconfigure M1 and M2, these buttons right here on the steering wheel. And so many things you can change up here. So we can see our engine, do you want it in efficient, sport, sport plus, transmission, do you want it in manual, that's the S's, or regular automatic, that's the D's, with shift aggression is the one, two, three. Chassis, comfort, sport, sport plus, steering, sport or comfort. Uh, DSC, your stability control system, do you want it to give you a little bit of play or no play at all with it completely on, or do you want it just to be turned off completely. Then your four-wheel drive system, you've got four-wheel drive standard, four-wheel drive sport for a little bit of slip and a little more rear drive bias. Right? No, it's not slip, sorry, that was the stability control system. Just rear drive bias, do you want more rear drive bias or do you want it completely in two-wheel drive mode? You can only do that by turning off DSC completely to go to two-wheel drive mode. And then the start-stop system, on or off, sound control, how loud you want your exhaust volume inside the cabin and it is an active exhaust system, so you have those butterfly valves. Head-up display, move adjust the head-up display. Instrument panel, what information do you wanna show up here? Going back out, vehicle status, settings, experience modes. These Mercedes-Benz MBUX system has like a million experience modes. This, we've just got three. Hit executive, and it's gonna change up some settings, give you a little more airflow, uh, cool your seats, 
give you, if it had fragrance, it would have given you fragrance, but we don't have fragrance, thank goodness. You can end that mode here, expressive, more of the same thing, change, I think it like heats the steering wheel and give you some nice music. Those are your experience modes. Apps, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, yes. Android Auto is now part of BMW's iDrive system. Took a long time, and again, I think that was related to the partnership, the exclusive partnership they had with Apple. Now the partnership terms are over, and they can add in Android Auto, so that is now part of the system. Big plus there. And that is the iDrive system shown on this new 12.3 inch display. Moving on down, we've got our start stop button over here and a nice button, a physical button you can press. You don't have to hunt in the menus to turn off the start stop system. That's great. Did I show you the turn signals? I don't think I did. Right, left, and then, oh, whoop, I pressed too hard. One touch. That actually happens a lot to me where you just little too much on the weight of this and it goes into the full turn signal, not the one touch. To get into your active safety systems, press that button there and you can reconfigure this, have them all on, have them all off, have an individual setting and this is how you reconfigure which collision mitigation and alert systems do you want on and what level do you want them to engage. That's there. AC vents, I feel a little cheapy to be honest. Slide that to open or close them. You do have a physical volume knob here. So you've got your voice controls, you've got that touchscreen, you've got this control wheel here, and you've got physical volume knob. No physical tuner, but that you can adjust with this. Then we have a quad zone climate control as standard. And this new LED display down here is going to be updated for 2021. So you can see we've got touch controls for our seat heating and seat ventilation. Massaging was gonna be here in the door. Press this on or off, and you've got three levels. So massage, massage, massage level one, two, and three. And then here are all the different massages you can choose from. Thank you, massage. And as you go down the levels, this green light will go down. So you don't have to just rely on that. And down here to show the full display on this climate control one, you gotta turn on the fan. Raise lower the fan speed, turn up or down the temperature, and then this shows you where the airflow is going. Great contrast stitching, great contrast stitching on leather. Feels very nice. This doesn't feel as nice. Slide it back and you reveal wireless smartphone charging there. Interesting to note about this, this is a very narrow window, so I find it kind of hard to get your hand in there to get your phone. It's actually pretty annoying, but it is rubberized, so your phone's not gonna go sliding. And then we've got a USB port right there, standard USB DC socket in here. Smallish cup holders, we'll put those to a test later. And then here's your key. Unlock, lock, and then trunk release. Nice finish to the key, feels high quality. This is black plastic, black plastic on the back, and then BMW M tricolor on the side. Moving on back, traction control, hold that to turn it off completely. And we've consolidated these buttons here now for 2021. So we just have this setup button that we press and that brings up this prompt for your engine. Do you want efficient, sport, sport plus, chassis, comfort, sport, sport plus, steering, comfort or sport. And then when you have traction control turned to M dynamic mode, which I'll show you in just a second, you can change up four wheel drive to sport or two wheel drive. That brings us to the second button, M mode. So right now we are in road, let's go back to that. And that all your comforts and safety features are on. Sport changes up the display. Driver assistance systems are inactive now. So that changed from, hang on, let me just show you again. This to this. Just got the tack on the left and right. Your gear and your speed just focuses your attention on that. Up here, we changed from this itty bitty to the big boy. That's pretty cool. While you're driving, to have that full tack right in your peripherals is very nice. And in fact, you still have your speed and the speed limit below that. So you don't lose out on anything really. Now for 2021, the newest thing is that track mode, which we had before for 2020, but now it changes things up. 
So keeping this M mode button pressed, track mode will now turn off all the safety systems, will put iDrive in standby, so basically blanks out the screen, all of your comfort features are gone and it just focuses on the drive. It kills all the nannies, all of the, all of the uh, stability control systems and all that. And it just, it's really just for track driving. So I'm gonna press this again and then hold it, to show you track mode and then activate track. Let's do it. So this is what it looks like now. We are focused. Neato. So that's track mode. That's the update for 2021. I'm gonna press it again, and we go back to road. Looking down below this, this is your exhaust, exhaust louder, quieter, press the button, goes away. Parking sensors, hit that, brings up this camera system. And here's where we can change a bunch of things up. So we can look at this angle of the car, that angle of the car, that angle of the car. And then when we go to the automatic one, go in here, go to 3D view, and now you can look at the whole surround of the car with 3D picture and you can use gesture control to just work your way around the vehicle. This feels a little gimmicky. Gesture control, very useful, and I find very intuitive to just do this for volume up and down. It's not doing it right now, I think maybe because I'm in this menu. And this for mute, but okay, worked there. I was just praising you. Why are you being so upset right now? Maybe the entertainment isn't on. I don't know, that's probably my fault. But gesture control, useful for those functions, not for this. I feel like this is gimmicky. I would just much rather not do this and just be able to work my way around the car, going to specific zones. But yeah, there's that. And then there's this really cool one, car wash. So if you're worried about running up against uh, the little bumper guides for the automatic car wash, here you go, this will show you exactly where your wheels are going as you turn the wheel, so you can line up just right. That's a handy one. Backup assistant is part of this car. So you hit this button when you're in reverse and the car will just automatically back you out of a space and angle the wheel to let you be pointed to go just down the, the line of cars. And you have automatic parking function for parallel and perpendicular parking, it will do it for you. So that's all that. You got an auto hold, very important, love that. Cars that don't have that, it doesn't make any sense to me. Take your foot off the brake when you're sitting in a stoplight and just relax for a second. We've got red on the side of the gear selector here, red there. This whole thing isn't wrapped in leather, but the back of the piece is right there. And you've got this metal trim there. And then click over to go into drive, click over one more time for manual, left for neutral and left up to go into reverse. Pull back and hit this button down here to go into park. This is gonna be your shift logic. How aggressive do you want your shifts? Click up or down there. Then over, of course, this is with the iDrive system. This is very user-friendly, very easy to use. And then you can scribble on words there for your navigation or use voice commands. Click forward, back, left, right. And then here are some hotkeys for you. Some shortcuts, media, communication, menu, map, navigation, back and option. In here, we don't have much space at all. This is a very small little cubby. You've got another USB-C port, but just, I don't know what really is gonna fit in there apart from pens and uh, I don't know, maybe a notepad, a small notepad. You're just not fitting much in there. But this is all leather wrapped and gray contrast stitched. Then over on this side, the passenger side, we've got more of that 3D carbon trim. We've got metal trim below that. Uh, we've got the gray contrast stitching in leather metal piece for the release for your glove box. Eh, it's a respectable side glove box. The uh, manual takes up a lot of the space. Looking up, we've got an Alcantara headliner, also nice. Of course, with that carbon fiber roof piece, you can't fit a, um, wow, moonroof. Moonroof is the word I was looking for. Pano or otherwise, nothing's coming up here, but you do have the Alcantara, which is nice. You know what's not nice though? Hang on, let me go wide. This sun visor, great. Okay, nice mirror there. I was just gonna go over here and you know what? It just doesn't slide. It doesn't slide. Very annoying. Very annoying because you have that little gap there and the sun moves and then you can't protect yourself. Um, also kind of underwhelming are that these are completely plastic grab handles 
on a lot of the nicer cars. This vehicle as tested is like $146,000. Why does it have a leather piece there for you to grab for the rear or for the front? That's a bummer to me. Making sure I'm in park. Yes, I'm in park. Okay, and then rear view mirror, plastic backing. You've got your dome lights here. SOS, help me. And then that means we need to go check out the rear. Open on up. You can see the soft clothes from out here. Do your thing, thank you. Looking inside the back. Oh, I forgot to mention, when you get the competition package, you get the BMW tricolor on the seat belts. That's a neat little touch. The seats aren't very aggressively designed. Aggressive again, I'm sorry, it's an overused word. Aren't, um, I don't know, emphatically designed, excitingly designed uh, back here. They're a little plain, but they are comfortable. Great contrast stitch in places, perforation in places. Heating, I mentioned, is part of the executive package. The backs of the seats, this I like, all in leather. That's part of the extended merino leather. Even the little envelope carry back there is in leather. Here are where are your, okay. Jeez, I scared myself. Gotta get down here to find them. There are the hooks. So that's that, and that's that. Full coverage. I didn't do this one right. Full coverage for your sunshades in the back. Okay, now it's stuck. Now it's stuck. Leather for these door trim pieces in here. Great contrast stitch, more of that trim, more of the ambient lighting. And it flashes red when your door is open. It'll also flash at you as a warning if there is someone coming up, say a biker on your left or a car coming, it'll flash at you so you say, I'm not going to open my door right this second. The trim. The aluminum handle, little Bowers and Wilkins speaker cover there, bigger one down here, injection molding, leather, soft plastic. One touch down, but not one touch up. You have to hold it. Why? How much extra would have cost you BMW to do one touch up? Help me out. Center armrest. No storage in here, but you do have cup holders that come out. and then you've got to pass through there for your skis or snowboard. And then let's sit inside. Close that door. You can see the ambient lighting there. And now I'm sitting behind my own driving position at six feet tall. I've got definite knee room and the foot pockets are good size so I can slide my feet under, reduce that knee angle. Headroom, generous. Long torso body here, guys and I've got an inch of headroom. That's solid, love that. Looking at the quad zone climate control down here, you can turn up or down your fan speed there. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, thank you. And then your seat heating on the left and on the right. Two USB-C ports down there, a DC socket, so just enough charging for every passenger. Four ways to charge your smart device in this BMW. Just enough. Dome lights up here. And yeah, just, you know, comfortable digs, but not overdone in any particular way. It is classic German conservative. And now let's go check out the trunk. So yeah, very impressed with the legroom and headroom in the back of the M5. Again, headroom, it's what you get when you don't try to coopify everything. This one has the power trunk that I showed you. So you press the button on the center there, pops on up, my backpack for reference. I will list the cargo capacity of this trunk back here right now. No false floor here. Um, so you're not gonna get a spare tire or anything like that. I, There may be a way to open this up. I was not able to actually get my finger in there. There's no easy way to lift this up. So if there is a way to open it up, maybe an inflation kit that you will fly, find under there. If you know, let me know in the comments. I wasn't able to get it up apart from getting up like flat nose or flathead screwdriver and opening up that way storage in there oh maybe that's where your inflation kit yes that's your inflation kit so there is no false floor no false floor could not find a way to lift it up because there is no false floor and then you got a deep cubby here netting over there and they were 
they left me this thing to remind me that yes, you can open the trunk with a key in your pocket. Car is on right now, key is not on me. But if I had it, I would show you that you could just kick. Yeah, I'll show you a B-roll clip of that. You can just kick and open the trunk. This is the way that you fold down the back seats, pull these tabs left and right, but they don't just fold. So you have to put your arm in there and push and push and there they go and it's a reasonable height there so you could fit decent items there's your utility vehicle right there guys buy sedans don't buy suvs just kidding i like suvs too but SUV, uh, sedans aren't dead yet not completely flat folding seats but you can see good amount of utility there seats fold up real easy the gas cap the fact that there is one why is there not capless filling of course it needs premium fuel capless filling add it to all vehicles ever okay thank you close this up nice soft close there pop back inside and there's just one more thing we need to do what do we think that is yeah, it's time for a big bottle test in the 21 BMW M5 competition. So we'll start with the front cup holders as usual. And I'm not optimistic because they're kind of small. Yeah, that's that's what you've got going on there. Center console. Don't know why I'm even trying. That's as much of the bottle as I can fit in the center console. Depressing. Door pockets. Bit larger, but not big enough. No, that's definitely coming out. Glove box, I don't even want that. Want the manual in there? Nope, you'd have to take that out. I'm just not doing that, no. I'm sad to say that the M5 competition passes, sorry, fails, fails the big bottle test. Pretty resounding failure there. Womp womp. Okay, now with that, let's do this, let's go. Um, excuse me. Sport Plus. Now we can rev it up and get going. Well, guys, this morning's bummer was finding out that my favorite canyon road was closed, so I'm just going to have to do my best on more suburban streets. But I think I should have what I need. Holy cow, holy cow, this is a screamer, this car, insane. We still have the same 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 from last model year's M5. It's making also the same 600 horsepower in the standard M5, 617 if you get the competition model that we've got here and 553 pound-feet of torque across the board, connected to an eight-speed automatic gearbox sourced from ZF, and pairing that with all-wheel drive. Zero to 60, if you do it just right, is 3.1 seconds or faster, depending on the independent test, and top speed has now been raised from 177 to 189 miles an hour. 189 in a four-door monstrous and this transmission is so so good it's quick with the shifts these paddles are not the most satisfying to manipulate but when you pull them you get a gear that's just how quick it is pull gear pull gear it's that quick it's a great transmission some of the changes for 2021 to the driving dynamics are that they adjusted the shock absorbers mostly for ride comfort in this M5 competition because it was a little stiff. It very much was. I drove the 2019 model and uh, felt like I wanted to get out of it. And that was even in comfort mode. Now, however, the ride quality, while remaining very firm, you do get bumpy on bouncy roads, even in comfort mode, is not punishing like it was before. So here in comfort mode, I've got everything else dialed up. I can enjoy the performance, 
but not feel like my back is going to break. You could commute in this without issue while also just blowing the doors off anything around you. Oh, and that soundtrack's great too. The sports exhaust is standard with the competition package and it sounds pretty darn good at full wide open throttle. <laughs> If you're not there, then it's not that great. And yes, they are piping in some of the noise into the cabin through the speakers, but it doesn't sound artificial in any way. This sounds like real V8 music and a very BMW soundtrack. And my goodness, does it pick up speed. This is such a rocket, this car. And it doesn't look it, apart from the very blue paint job, this car doesn't look anything out of the ordinary. It's just a five series with some bigger wheels and yes gold brake calipers if you get the carbon ceramics but it doesn't look like anything outrageous until you put your foot down and people don't see you anymore they see a blur that's vanished that is this car and the steering in this vehicle is tremendous as well i'm going to come up to a stoplight so we can test these brakes hard on the brakes and they're great very very good brakes pull you down in a hurry with no drama, nice bite at the beginning, gives you that confident pedal throughout. Excellent brakes that we have here. These are the carbon ceramics, but the steels are gonna do the same job. The only difference that the brakes are gonna show with the carbon ceramics are if you're going to the track constantly, these are gonna be more resistant to heat buildup and fade of performance. That's why you get the carbon ceramics. Around town, you just don't need them unless you really like gold brake calipers. I want to talk about the steering, but we're sitting at a stoplight. So let's talk about other things. This car from a luxury standpoint is stellar with one exception. I mentioned the trim in the interior walk around and it still just bothers me. I don't like looking at it. And I'm pretty sure this piece right here in the center that slides over the cup holders is already broken. That's frustrating, but these seats are superbly comfortable and so adjustable. You have all these adjustments here on the side to find just the right driving position for you. Good, I can give a turning radius test right now. Crank it and go for it. Pretty tidy, pretty tidy. And back on the throttle. Oh yes, oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, so anyway, luxury car stuff to take it out of manual mode and we can talk about luxury the seats i already mentioned are very comfortable the solid build quality here apart from the trim is very apparent the insulation of this cabin is superb i'm now at freeway speeds i'm doing 73 miles an hour on this very open road i promise you and it's quiet it's nice and quiet i would be happy to commute in this vehicle without any disruption apart from the occasional bump which just makes you do this that's it that's all it's a lovely vehicle to cruise in and you have all those active safety features some of which are part of that driving assistance plus package including the steering assistance on the highway i can demonstrate that right now just simply press that button press down to hit the set button and then you can drive hands-free for a period of time it's doing a curve right now without issue at all and then it'll flash you yellow saying hey you need to check back in on the steering you do that every once in a while and it's fine. The infrared sensors there are looking at my eyes, making sure I'm facing forward. If I start doing this, then it's gonna get upset and it's gonna make me take back over immediately. But those systems work very, very well along with all of your active stuff. You've got auto emergency braking, you've got blind spot monitoring with your cross traffic alerts, all the things you would need in a luxury sedan like this when you don't want to have a little bit of an incident. So all the luxury touches are there, the comfort is there, the build quality is there, apart from the trim, and the performance is definitely there. The steering, I can finally get back to the steering. The steering is excellent. BMW knows how to dial up an electronic steering rack to make it simulate hydraulic, real genuine feel from those front tires. They do a great job and they don't overweight it too much. There is a bit of extra heft that you get when you go through the settings and you go to sport steering as opposed to comfort steering that's gonna be lighter, but you kinda of like it. You like the thickness of the wheel. You like how the, the, it, the resistance there from the wheel that helps you simulate what you think the front tires are doing, how you know the grip is there or not. That's all good. So I'm a big fan of that. I like the M modes here on the steering wheel. We've got M1, 
that I've set up to do launch control if we get to that at some point. M2 is gonna give me rear wheel drive mode, yes. Even though it's an all wheel drive car, I can have a rear wheel drive mode that will let me be a hooligan if I want to. Like that. Like that. So yeah, you can do that. That was M2. Having the ability to just go rear wheel drive all in one go is so fun. And now let's try M1 because we're at a stoplight. M1 are all the settings for launch control. Now launch control, if I wanted to do it without M1, would be to shift over to manual mode and go up to shift logic three and then turn off the traction control system. I've done all that already. So it's foot on the brake, give it some gas, build it up, let go. Ho! Oh, the second gear hit is so powerful and vicious. That was a lot of speed. That was a lot of speed right there very quickly. This is a land missile, guys. This M5 competition is a land missile while cosseting you in luxuries. That's outrageous. I love this car. I love it so much. Do I love it as my daily driver? Is this what I would pick for my daily driver? Well, let's talk about the competition at this point and see if it's the best way to go because yes, you can keep up with supercars while also having your kids in the back. Pretty amazing. So $105,495 will get you in the door for the 2021 BMW M5, but you're gonna wanna set aside an extra $7,500 bringing you to $113,000 for the M5 competition. That way you get the exterior details, you get the sports exhaust, you get the M tricolor seat belts, and this full merino leather interior. It is worth the extra money, along with that extra 17 horsepower. So to recap the stats, 113,000, 617 horsepower, zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds, top speed of 189 miles an hour. How does it compare? We have the 2021 Audi RS7 that makes 591 horsepower, a little less. Starts at 113,000 though, so right along here with the M5 competition. Zero to 60 is slower at 3.5 seconds. Top speed is a little higher at 190 miles an hour. Fuel economy though, and I didn't mention that for the M5 competition, and I should because it's not its strong suit. 15 city, 21 highway, 17 combined. This car inhales gasoline, but so does the RS7. 17 combined for that one as well. Then we have the Porsche Panamera Turbo S in all of its $175,000 glory. Makes 620 horsepower, a little more than this. Zero to 60 is a bit quicker, 2.8 seconds. Top speed is a bit higher at 196 miles an hour. Then we have the most direct rival, the Mercedes AMG E63 S. That is going to start at $108,000, so a little less, a little bit of savings there. The top, sorry, the power is 603 horsepower. The zero to 60 is somehow on paper a little quicker at 3.0 seconds though. Independent tests show them pretty much neck and neck. And then top speed is three miles per hour slower than the M5 competition at 186 miles an hour. Which would I choose? Which one would be my daily driver and weekend track warrior? Well, if it was a dream world, I'd take elements of all three cars. I would take the RS7's ride quality, which is fantastic. I would take the Panamera Turbo S's steering feel, which is dialed in and sensational. And then I would take the E63 S's soundtrack. But it's not a perfect world, so you have to pick one, the most well-rounded of the set. I have to put the Panamera Turbo S off to the side because it costs so much money, $175,000. The R7 I don't think looks great from all angles and it just doesn't engage me behind the wheel of the car quite as much. And then the E63S is very good. I don't think it looks as good as the M5 competition though and I don't think the build quality is quite as high. That means my favorite and still to me the legacy of this Super Sedan set is the 2021 BMW M5 competition. It does everything well. The trim needs to be changed out. The ride could be slightly softer. Apart from those things, it's brilliant. It pulls like a freight train. It's comfortable, it's luxurious. It looks subtle yet fierce. This is it guys. This is the car to have. I want one, can't afford one, maybe one day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. 
I literally just put my foot on the floor. I don't know what happened. I have to downshift all the way here. Okay, until next time.